Hey guys, um, today we're going to go over a pretty simple topic in Substance Painter. I'm going to talk about how to use masks effectively to elevate your artwork. Now this is a fairly simple topic, so some of you may already know how to use masks, but I'd encourage you to watch anyways because there might be something you pick up that you didn't think about or know before. So I'm just going to pull in a new file. And I already have a video talking about how to set up a file in Substance Painter, so I'm not going to go through that, but it's in my description. So if you need to take a look at that, that's totally fine. I'm just pulling out my FBX, bringing up the resolution to 4000, and making sure that my normal map format is on OpenGL, and then I'll click OK. It's going to bring up this mechanical hand that I'm going to texture today. The first thing you should always do is go to texture set settings and click bake mesh maps. And I added vertex colors for my model. So I'm going to go to ID under color source. I'm going to click vertex color and select bake selected textures. Okay. And if I go to return to painting mode and click layers over here, you can see that if I just find a metal texture and throw it on my model, Automatically, I mean, it's kind of cool, this looks like a Thor hand, but anyways, automatically you can see that the texture is applied to the entire model. And there are a couple of ways to separate your models so that you're able to separate textures based on different parts of your model. The first way you can do it is by applying different materials to your model while you're in your 3D program. And when you do that and import it to Substance Painter, you'll see those materials up here and you can click on different ones and add these textures to your different materials. It will only apply them to that materials part of the model. The second way to separate them is by using masks. And so there are three main types of masks we're gonna talk about today. And the first one is called a white, an add white mask. And so in order to add a mask, you wanna select the material you wanna add the mask to, then you're going to go over to this button here, click it and add whichever mask you want. And we're going to add white mask and you can see nothing happened. Um, in the world of masks, white means that everything is showing and black means that nothing's showing. So since we added a white mask, you can see that nothing's changed in our model. Now we can edit this mask in a couple of different ways. The most straightforward way is to go over to the polygon fill tool. And if you just start clicking different parts of your model, you can see that that material is being removed from certain parts of your model. And you can see if we look at our mask over on the right hand side, um, there are little pieces of black being applied to that mask. And that's just showing that wherever we're allowing our polygon fill to take away texture, it's taking, it's applying that to the mask. Now, if we go back, there's another way to edit your mask. I um, mean, that's by painting directly to your model. So if you add your mask, select the mask and then right click, you can add paint. So what that basically does is it allows you to paint on your model and everywhere you paint is going to remove that material from your model. And it doesn't really matter what polygons are selected. It, you're able to essentially just paint on, on the mesh and it, it figures it out from there. And you can see if we look at our mask, there are little black specks on our mask and that's where the, the mask's being applied. So that is a white mask. The Another mask you can use is a black mask. And if you add a black mask, the complete opposite happens. And basically, because black means it's removing whatever you're masking, it's taken off all of the texture on our model. And so if we go over to the polygon fill and start clicking polygons, nothing happens because automatically you see up on the top panel, it's set to black. Now, if we change that to white, and start clicking things, you can see that our texture is appearing back. And just like with the white texture, if you right click and click add paint, you can just, whoops, and then go over to your paintbrush tool, you can paint your texture back on. And so painting a texture is really helpful if there are really specific details you wanna add, that kind of helps you add them exactly where you want. Now, a way of masking that I haven't shown so far is called a smart mask. And if we go over here to 
smart masks, which is right here, you can see there are a lot of different options that come up. So basically what a smart mask is, is it's a procedural texture that uses a lot of different information that was applied to your model or like inherent in your model. Um, and it uses that information to apply a mask. So for instance, when we baked our, our mesh, it basically calculated all of the curves, all of the angles, and stored that data so that if we added a smart mask, it would be able to tell where to mask out and where to mask in certain things. And so if we just take a random mask and pull it into our mask panel here, you can see what happens is it's showing that texture only where this particular mask dictates that it should be shown. And so this is dirt cavities. And that implies that it's it's calculated where the cavities of your model are. And it's only going to show you texture where it can justify that it's it's a cavity on your model. Now, these are really useful when you're trying to add a dirt effect or something to your model. So if we go back and just keep our, our texture on our model, but then we added a fill layer and we'll make this fill layer a dirt color, kind of a brown, let's say, like that. Now, if we added a smart, so a black mask first, but then drag a smart mask into that slot, you can see it's only showing that fill layer in those cavities and you get kind of this grungy dirt effect on your model. So that's a really useful way to use, use smart masks to amplify the materials on your model. Now, the type of mask I use the most is, so if we go, and add that texture back on. Um, it's called mask with color selection. Now, in order to use this type of mask, you have to add vertex colors to your model beforehand, which is an extra step. Um, but I do have a video talking about how to do that in Blender if you're interested. But essentially, when you're in your 3D program, you add what's called vertex colors. And that's, they're not material colors, but they're information colors. And you can use those to dictate where a mask, where you can mask out different parts of your model. So I've already added the mask by color selection. And if you come down into the properties panel and click pick color, you can see that all of these colors show up. And depending on which color you pick, it will mask that texture to only show up on that color. For this example, I'm gonna click this light blue color. So now you can see that that texture only applies where that light blue texture was shown. And this technique of masking is really useful, when, especially when you have a lot of moving parts to your model and you don't want to have to go through the effort of polygon filling a bunch of different textures. So you can see just really quickly with a little bit of planning beforehand and applying your vertex colors, you can really, really quickly texture, do the base texturing of your model and get some really cool effects pretty quickly. And obviously this isn't really how I would texture this particular thing, but it shows you how quickly you can add textures to very specific parts of your model. Okay, so that's that's basically all I wanted to talk to you guys today, those three masking techniques. If you're new to Substance Painter and don't know where to start, masking is a really powerful skill or understanding to have because it dictates most of your texturing workflow. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. I try and get to those as quickly as possible. Um, I'd also love it if you liked and subscribed because that really helps me um, and allows me to make more videos. Thanks and blender on. Thanks guys. Bye.